Friday forecast time. It's homecoming week here in Lincoln. It's Nebraska and Rutgers, two teams, both receiving votes just outside the top 25. Sean, first, before we talk about the Scarlet Knights, let's talk about the Purdue Boilermakers. Man, a tale of two halves there. What went different? for the Huskers in that second half? Well, they just started finishing drives up. I mean, Nebraska had six possessions in the first half where they got inside, produced 40, yielded no points. I mean, how many times in a football game does that happen? Very rarely. And, you know, how many times do you see three missed field goals, two of them being blocked? There were just so many operational issues of special teams, along with maybe just some third down sloppiness by Nebraska. The Huskers were great on first down in that game. I thought that was one of the stories of the game. Nebraska averaged over eight yards per play on first down over the course of that game, and it really started to show up in the second half. Yeah, one of eight on third down. Dylan Raiola, man, this guy is making the right moves and the right calls at the right time, it seems. You know, Dylan Raiola's poise for a true freshman, it's just not like a true freshman. When you watch him out there, the way he operates, he has gotten Nebraska out of so many of those second and 20, third and 20 type plays. Where in years past, Nebraska would almost have to play to punt there. You know, maybe, hey, let's just play to get 10 or 15 to help our punter out. Now they have a legitimate weapon that can make the right reads and throws to get them out of those situations. And you know, he, he's just cool as a cucumber. You just don't really see him make bad throws. He's okay with throwing the ball away in the back of the end zone to live another down, which you just that, that's a rare trait for any young player, especially a quarterback. Another week, and who knows what's going to happen at running back who will get the lion's share of the load. Last week, Emmett Johnson certainly gave this team a spark. Yeah, Emmett Johnson gave Nebraska 98 yards of scrimmage from receiving in as a runner. Clearly the most effective back, but there's still something about Dante Dowdell between the tackles. They, they, they want that complement to give the punch, then to allow Emmett and Ramir to kind of run. Um, so I do think you're going to see all three backs again continue to play. Um, and we even saw Gabe Irvin Jr. have a special play in the goal line package where um, he took the ball on, on a reverse type handoff to, and, and got five yards or four yards and came one yard short of the goal line. So there, there's different wrinkles of these four backs, but there's no question Emmett Johnson, I think, has earned himself even a bigger role. Right. Dowdell's so good in that early portion of the game to kind of set the tone. Defensively, the Huskers now, I believe, plus five on the turnover margin, and they're taking the ball away, which is something we haven't said in years past. Yeah, these aren't just teams, you know, fumbling it away on their own or having a bad snap. I mean, Nebraska's forcing turnovers, and that's the key word, force. John Bullock, fumble strip. Sierra Wright, sack strip. John Bullock, pick six. Those are the last three that we've seen from this Nebraska defense. They've all been big. They've all been in conference games. And now, I mean, it's going to take an awful lot for Nebraska to fall below the plus side. I mean, to be at plus five, it's, it's been a long time. I'm not even sure in 2016 what they ended up finishing that year. Uh, but they are on a great, great trend. And a lot of it goes back to Dylan Raiola. He takes care of the ball so well. The style they run at the running backs doesn't really lead to a lot of fumbles. When you're just doing the more drawn out straight handoffs, you know, th those are just, you know, it's safer. You just don't see the fumble. Like Wisconsin's offense um, under Paul Chris and Barry Albers, they didn't fumble it a lot because they weren't putting the quarterback in harm's way and their quarterbacks made good reads. And, and we're seeing Nebraska do something similar. Rutgers offensively, they, they will test Nebraska, no question. They like to possess the ball. They got their quarterback is a guy you know, Ethan Calicmanis, who was played at Minnesota. He's beaten Nebraska twice, so he knows how to win. And then Kyle Monagai, right? He is f third in the nation in rushing yards per game, just under 150. Rutgers is going to give uh, the Blackshirts a challenge. Yeah, Rutgers wants to shrink this game. They want to limit the possessions. Uh, Monaghy's averaging 25 carries a game, so you know what they're going to do. It's three yards here, five yards there, third and two. It's going to be a little bit of a rollout. Kelly Amanis, dump it out, yeah. first down. And we, That's we watched what it. That's what they want, right? We watched them against Washington. That's exactly what they do. They're very comfortable in third and short, even fourth and short. Yeah, they want to be in third and two, third and three, and – Callie Amonis doesn't have a big league arm, mm -hmm. but he's good enough and he has a, a lot of experience to get those first downs. He's not going to ever try to just win the game with his arm. He is going to make the decisions to keep them moving, chew the clock, get points on special teams. And you saw they got 21 points last week, and that was enough to beat Washington. Yeah, and he can use his feet as well. It's homecoming Saturday. It's Nebraska Rutgers. It's a 3 p.m. kick. It's on Fox Sports 1.